Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. And today I have set up my Spectra video SVR 328 since I'm gonna do a little uh, product test on uh, a new gadget I got that can be used with this machine and other machines. And the gadget I'm talking about is uh, this one, it's the SVR CAS device. Alright, so this is the device, uh, it's looking very nice, sleek design and it has a OLED screen I think, or LCD screen, we'll see. So this was sent to me all the way from Australia by uh, Duncan who actually makes this and uh, he sent it uh, free of charge, so I just want to mention that uh, there's no strings attached and uh, it's uh, not a sponsored video but I'm gonna do a little review on this and uh, see if it's any good. Alright so what is it actually? Well this is a device that you can uh, use instead of uh, for example this old thing and uh, these old uh, thingies. <laughs> so if you are a young then you might not have ever seen things like this before but if you grew up in the 70s and 80s and 90s then you know all about this. So it is essentially a device that emulates a cassette player and to do that it actually uses cassette image files that are actually complete copies of a cassette and uh, the formats it support, it's uh, different types of format for different kinds of machines. There are TAP files for the Commodores, there are uh, CAS files for <laughs> other machines like the MSX machine, Spectrum. And, and this device supports a lot of the old retro machines from Commodore to Amstrad to uh, Sinclair and uh, yeah, MSX machines, uh, Spectra videos and uh, even the Apple II is supported. So this is going to be a test of uh, this device and I'm not going to open it or uh, discuss uh, the technical uh, things inside here uh, because I was told that if I try to open this it might uh, break because the the screen is um, glued to the case and also there are some short uh, cables inside that uh, easily can break if you pull it apart. And with the device I also got uh, this cable, this is, um, I think this is for the Commodore machines and uh, yeah I got another cable here, I think actually this will fit uh, the Spectra video. Yeah, the difference is that uh, this one for Commodore has uh, this divider besides uh, pin number two or <laughs> column number two and this has on column number three. And I also got on the CD-ROM uh, the user's manual and uh, lots and lots of uh, tape images that I can use. Uh, so I no longer need to go online and search for cassette tape files uh, <laughs> to test with. If you saw my previous video about the Spectra video machine and uh, also other machines, I have used this device which is a Castuino based on uh, an Arduino board and uh, this actually works fine but, uh, but the SVI CAS uh, supposedly has a lot more features uh, than these simpler ones are and uh, yeah, we'll check it out soon. Before I start I just want to check out the user's manual or the owner's manual and uh, yeah here it says SVI CAS revision 5 digital tape drive playback and recording system and the uh, table contents uh, yeah it uh, seems to be a very good um, <laughs> owner's manual uh, really good documentation it has all the different uh, requirements for the different machines and uh, how to play back on different machines seems like. Yeah and here it says the SVI CAS is the successor to the now discontinued SVI wave. 
Uh, here's a picture of uh, the device in use and it has a color screen and it uses a SD memory card. Key features, full SD card based image playback and recording system. Uh, color TFT touch screen, yeah it's a TFT screen. Plug and play design, fully configurable. Board rate and image playback control proper directory navigation and file deletion facilities, image inspection, internal file selection launching, playback position memorized for later repeat playback, adapter cable allows connection to the SVI 318 and 328 and CBM cassette port, so this comes with a cable for uh, Spectre videos and uh, Commodore. Yeah, different types of uh, image CAS, TAP, TSX, TCX, and so on. Support for Spectra Video, TRS-80, Coco, Dragon, MSX, Sinclair, Amstrad, Acorn, Commodore, Auric, and most other retro systems. And here it goes on with a little bit of information about uh, the technical stuff. Seems to use a TI-MSP430 uh, microcontroller, I guess, and uh, yeah, Mega 2560 development board. Firmware was written from scratch with a combination of C programming language and Atmel assembler. This is not an Arduino based product. And here's a little bit more information about the requirements. You need an SD card, 2 gig is, uh, should be large enough and uh, you need a 9 volt DC power supply. Uh, with the uh, center positive, so I think I got that. It didn't come with the uh, device, so uh, it would be a plus if it came with a power supply. Because of most modern uh, devices nowadays uses USB uh, 5 volt power. Then it goes on uh, with how to prepare the SD memory card, and uh, yeah, seems to be just uh, the regular FAT32 formatted SD card nothing special there and also about the touch screen operation and about the main menu so i'm not going to go through all this uh, right now i think we're just gonna need to test this and see if we can figure it out all righty then it's uh, time to test and i found the uh, 9 volt power supply this has this uh, plug which you can turn around and switch um, the polarity so I'm just going to check that it is uh, in fact center positive yeah it's uh, 8.99 volts plus so I switched over to the SVI and we're going to test on that machine first and here is a, a SD card which you're supposed to insert um, you don't have to take off this lid but uh, yeah, this case seems to be for something else. It has a battery compartment, but uh, <laughs> yeah, now it's just a holder for the SD card and uh, this is the correct uh, direction then. Okay, let's see if it uh, works. I'm gonna insert the power. <laughs> So it uh, even has a uh, sound. Okay, so this is uh, the menu and uh, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And it came with this uh, stylus pen, uh, but you probably can use uh, the fingers, yeah. Okay, let's try files then. So here is uh, the list of files and this is a memory card I have used uh, on uh, the Castuino and other devices and uh, I have a folder here called MSX so can't select that you need to use these uh, arrow buttons uh, to select and uh, yeah you can delete files and uh, yeah I guess this is uh, open yeah, now we're into the MSX uh, folder. So uh, yeah, it would be um, more intuitive to just tap the file name. But this is MSX files and these can't be used on uh, 
the SVR 328, so I'm gonna go home. Go to the SVI folder. So here's a few games for uh, SVI. Let's see if I can uh, play some of these games. Spectron. I used that before and it is working. All right, so I'm just gonna insert um, the cable. So I selected um, the game. If you saw the video about this machine, you actually saw that I made this um, temporary uh, audio cable here. And also I uh, bridged the two of the connectors on the cassette port uh, so that uh, the computer thought that the cassette was always running. So I actually removed the whole thing because uh, now I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna try and uh, load. The command is uh, cload. And now this um, SVI CAS, it actually made an, uh, <laughs> a sound. Before I can use this, I need to select the correct computer. And uh, yeah, this top button here changes between the different uh, computers and different settings. So let me see, there's the SVI 318 328. Then we go to files down to SVI and I want to try out this uh, Spectrum play and now it goes into pause and playing and yeah on the screen there is found load G so that actually worked great and uh, this is just a loader for the game so just uh, run it and uh, now the SVI CAS automatically starts playing and uh, loading the rest of the game yeah it shows progress and uh, yeah this works as expected one thing uh, I wasn't sure what the connector goes where so I had it the wrong way first and it didn't load and then I swapped those two and uh, now I know and I also made a mark here <laughs> and on the cable so I know which one is the correct one next time. Yeah and there you go it loaded successfully on the first try so uh, that's excellent. <laughs> I'm not gonna play this game. <laughs> I found another game uh, this one is YR Kung Fu. And this uh, image actually consists of three parts. And the fact that you see all these uh, details about uh, the game, it's really nice. You see the format and uh, yeah, the name of course, and the size and the file name and the file type. So that's really nifty. All right, that loaded uh, just fine. I don't have a joystick connected, so... Uh, <laughs> Not really sure if I can play this. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Alright, the SVI CAS uh, worked just fine on the SVI computer. Now I found uh, this ZX Spectrum. Let's uh, test it on that one. And uh, for that, you only need a regular uh, 3.5mm uh, audio jacks, and there is no uh, remote control signal from this machine. So we don't need to hook up that. And this uh, Spectrum has a very noisy transformer. Uh, you can probably hear it. <laughs> and uh, I have to use that because now I'm using uh, the power supply for the Spectrum to power up this. <laughs> well, let's see now, let's change to the ZX Spectrum. And this uh, is really handy. You just change the machine uh, instead of having to try out all the different settings. Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And I added a couple of uh, Spectrum files now in the ZX 
folder. Let's try a commando. And now I press enter here to start loading. Okay, now let's try and uh, play this commando. All right, seems to be working. <laughs> yeah, program commando. I know we get the audio feedback from uh, the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> so now you hear how the data is coming over as audio. So the size on this game, uh, the file here, it's a 49K around there. And uh, this is a 48K machine. So <laughs> it's really maxed out then. Yeah, that loaded just fine. I died instantly as usual because I don't know what keys I'm gonna use. <laughs> All right, so now I'm uh, I'm in the game. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to play with the keyboard because you need uh, <laughs> you need both hands. All right, so uh, this seems to work just fine with the ZX Spectrum. All right, next machine, uh, this is a Commodore 64, as you might see. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna use uh, the other cable that came with, uh, with the SVR CAS, and this fits uh, into the cassette port of uh, the Commodore. Yeah, has a good fit there. And to load on a Commodore 64, you can just type load or press run stop shift. Gonna change to uh, Commodore. Commodore 64. And I have added a folder for Commodore 64. So let's try Commando here as well. <laughs> Not supported, okay. Hmm, that was um, strange. Oh, I see, <laughs> there are zip files. I forgot to unzip them. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, perhaps a, <laughs> a feature request I can <laughs> come with here and now. Support uh, zip files. <laughs> no, not really. I'm gonna fix this. All right, commando tap. So this is a tap file, tape file. Okay, play. Yeah, started to load. Now it seems to be correct, so it found commando. And this is an overload, so it's a fast loader, so that's supported. And the loading time is... Uh, <laughs> counting up <laughs> it says format top image block single raw file name the size so these tap files are actually quite large you see this is uh, over 600k but uh, I guess that's because um, these are actually wave files uh, I mean audio files and uh, Thus, they are uh, much bigger than the real data is. All right, uh, it came to about 85% and then the machine crashed, but um, that is probably because of the machine and not the SVI CAS. Maybe it's uh, some memory fault or bad PLA or anything like that. I'm gonna actually try another game and see if we can come any further. Let's try the 1942. Cool graphics. <laughs> Even if this is loading from a modern uh, SD memory card, it is still uh, slow. It's the same speed as it originally was on the, the real cassette. <laughs> now, I think this uh, machine actually has uh, started to fail because uh, this game too, it just suddenly crashed, so I'm gonna try another machine. 
This is the Commodore 64 that I built. If you haven't watched that series yet, please check back in my channel. You find a five video series about building this Commodore 64 from scratch. So let's test with this then. I haven't found a good keyboard solution for this machine, so I just have this temporary All right, now we're talking. So uh, the loading works just fine. It's the other machine that's uh, faulty now. Uh, now I know that, so I have to take a look at that machine at some point. <laughs> so this was uh, fun. Let's try one more. This motherboard uh, only has uh, new components except for the VIC-2 chip, the CPU and uh, the two CIAs. Everything else here is uh, brand new. Alrighty, that worked. Nice. And now I hooked up a joystick, so uh, let's uh, try this game a little bit. <laughs> Again, I'm changing uh, the machine here, and uh, let's see if we can find the Commodore Plus 4. Uh, nope, but the uh, Commodore 16 should be the same, so uh, yeah. So that will hopefully work, that's uh, essentially the same machine, uh, but uh, only with less memory than the Plus 4. And I made the Plus 4 catalog here, let's see, and... Uh, First thing I wanted to check is uh, this PRG files. A lot of games um, on the Plus4 World website uh, are uh, downloaded as PRG files, but uh, can we load those on this? No, not supported. Okay, they are probably uh, disk files then. Let's see this uh, Blue Max then. Not supported. That's a tap file. No, not supported. So I tried the different um, settings here. I tried to switch to generic mode or uh, Commodore 64 mode and uh, still uh, those tap files are not supported. All right, so um, then I don't know what to do more, except I did want to test out uh, how to record so uh, i want to test that out on this uh, plus four i'm gonna go down to the plus four folder here and uh, how do you record enter file name So now it is into recording and uh, I'm gonna just type a small program here. <laughs> and let's see now if we save this test writing data. All right, so now it's finished, uh, it had saved. So uh, now we can uh, go out from here and uh, yeah, there should be a new file then. This is really nice if you wanna convert some old files or games into um, tape images. Yeah, there's the test tap. Now let's see if we uh, clear the memory and try to load that one, the one we wrote. 
So this is actually supported even if it's a tap file. So there must be something uh, special on uh, those other tap files, not supported. So it takes a while to load it back. And I think the reason for that is that because I waited uh, too long uh, before I actually saved from the computer when I recorded this. So it probably just recorded a whole lot of <laughs> blank space. Yeah, you can see it's actually 45 kilobytes <laughs> big size on this little file with just uh, 10 bytes of code. So now actually the progress started <laughs> to, uh, to go. So. Uh, yeah, if you want to record, you need to start the recording just in the same moment as you save from the machine. Yeah, that worked. Well, kind of, it completed, but uh, it didn't come back to basic. <laughs> I'm not really sure why it didn't uh, complete the loading. Let me try and record once more. And uh, yeah, same folder t2 now I'm gonna save uh, much quicker ready recording So uh, that ended the save and we can uh, probably press, uh, yeah, what was it? Stop or, <laughs> oops. <laughs> so there's a bug probably in the software. <laughs> it just uh, crashed now with the irritating noise. All right, so um, now you have uh, a bug to fix just gonna take out the power percent <laughs> let me try and uh, and save once more and now we call it t3 so right is now paused and uh, I guess we're supposed to press this stop button then yes it is completed and we can uh, go back and see if we can load it all right so there's no t3 file here oh i didn't go into the plus four folder uh, when i recorded so it's here in the root menu so let's try that one And uh, load. I didn't specify a file name, so let's see if it completes now. Yeah, no, it actually worked. Nice. All right, so uh, that works. Maybe I just misunderstood the functionality in the beginning, but uh, it seems to be working fine. So there is a couple of other features as well. And uh, we can, for example, delete this file here if we don't want it anymore. Yeah, works. Seems like you cannot delete the whole uh, uh, folder. So maybe that's a good thing. Uh, so except for these tap files for the plus four that is not supported uh, this device seems to be working just fine um, yeah all right that was the testing of the svi cast device and uh, yeah i must admit i really like this uh, device it's uh, yeah size is uh, good handy it is in a nice uh, box uh, the screen is very good and uh, yeah it presents a lot more information than the smaller OLED variants that I have had before. So what I can say is that uh, this will be my preferred way of loading tape files for old computers from now on. And uh, yeah, it seems to be working just fine. It 
the work with all the machine I tested and uh, besides the tap files for the plus four that wasn't supported uh, everything else worked and uh, I'm sure those tap files might be supported in a firmware update uh, later however there are of course cheaper solutions than this uh, based on uh, Arduino and things like that and you also have uh, the floppy based emulators that uh, loads from uh, floppy disk images so hope you enjoyed this uh, video and as always uh, thanks a lot to my uh, supporters at patreon.com see you bye bye